Hi there, mathematicians. For math today, we are going to do a little bit of review before we do some all by yourself work that's coming up this week. I am going to do pages, let's see, this is 237 and the back, which is 238. And then I'm also going to do 239 and 240. You'll be able to find both of those in your math book. So 237, 238, 239, and 240. And then parents, let me give you a little hint. I'm going to do these via video right now, but if you would rather not watch the video and do this on your own time with your kiddo and you can read them the questions and do this together, absolutely 100% feel free to do that. And that maybe you like that better um, or maybe that's easier. But grownups, if you want them to watch the video, they can do it right along with me, whichever you prefer. The only thing, kiddos, that you will need are these papers and a crayon. So let's go ahead and get started. And just like I tell you every other time, if I'm going a little bit too fast, you can always pause and then push play um, when you're caught up. All right, let me get my pencil ready. I think I am going to choose blue today. Here we go. All right, for number one star, which is this one right here, I want you to draw the number, or excuse me, circle the number that is greater than seven. Which one of those numbers is greater than seven? Remember, greater means more. It is the number nine. Nine is greater than seven. Six is less than seven. All right, for number two apple, that's this one right here. We're gonna take a look at those counters. And I want you to count, excuse me, count the counters and then write the number that tells how many. And I want you to count all of them, the yellows and the reds. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven counters across the sky, down from heaven. That's the way we make a seven. All right, for number three fish, that's this one right here. Write the number that means none. What's the number that means none? Did you say it? Are you writing it already? It's zero. Great job. So you remember, we are just reviewing things that you probably already know. All right, number four heart, I want you to count how many of each color cube and then draw a circle around the number of cubes that is less than the other group. Let me say those directions again because I think I said it wrong. We're going to actually put an, let me see. Here's what we'll do. We're going to put an X on the number that's less and we'll circle the group that's greater. So here we go. <clears throat> How many cubes in the red group? One, two. Let's write the number two. And how many cubes in the yellow group? One, two, three. Let's write the three. Which group has more? The two or the three? The three has more, so let's circle it. And that means the two has less. Let's put an X on that. Sorry, that one was a little bit confusing. All right, I'm going to flip my page over. And now it looks like this, number five handprint. We need to compare these numbers and then we're gonna draw a circle around the one that's greater and X the one that's less. So we are comparing the number three to the number eight. Do you see that right here? Here's the three and here's the eight. Which one is greater and which one is less? Remember, we have lots of different tools and different strategies that we can use to determine which one's less and which one is greater. Maybe you already know, and you can go ahead and circle the one that's greater and X the one that's less. Let me show you one quick strategy that we've practiced. For the three, I'm gonna go ahead and draw three counters to show that. And then I'm gonna change my color of crayon 
for the eight, I'm going to draw eight counters. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Kinders, just by looking at that, can you see which number is greater? Yeah, it's the eight because look at all of those counters. It has a lot of extras. So I'm going to circle the eight and X the three. Three is less than eight and eight is greater than three. All right, moving on to number six, coffee cup. Write a number that is greater than three, but less than five. That sounds really tricky, but kindergartners can do hard things, right? If a number line helps you, you could look at a number line. In fact, on your little sleeves that Mrs. Barnard brought you like this, if you flip it over to the back, there are some number lines on the back. Now, this one's a little tricky because it goes all the way from zero to 20, but you can still look at these. We've been working on zero through 10, so you could use that number line right there to help you. So again, I said we're writing a number that's greater than three and less than five. If I looked at my number line here, here's three and here's five. Greater than three would be this way, Less than five would be this way. That means I landed on the number four. And then you can ask yourself, is four greater than three? Yes. Is four less than five? Yes. It's the number four. Great job, kiddos. All right, for number seven Christmas tree, I want you to draw five counters in a row and then write the number to tell how many. Your row can go this way, one, two, oh, mine's a little messy, three, four, five, or, oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, have it go this way, one, two, three, four, five. Some people might have drawn their row the other way, and that's okay, too. If your row goes like this, one, two, three, four. Goodness, Miss Barnard, I'm having a hard time with this computer day. Five, one, two, three, four, five. Is that how many I said? Yeah, if you did your row that way, that's fine also. Um, really, that is a column, and we will learn a little bit more about rows and columns. But if you have your counters all lined up, either way is fine. So I'm going to go ahead and fix mine so that mine are all next to each other. One, two, three, four, five, and write the number five. Go across, take a dive around the bend, and that's a five. All right, let's look at number eight flag. I want you to write the missing numbers in order. Look at this, they already have the five and the nine there. We're gonna have to write the number that comes before five. What's the number that comes before five that's gonna go right here? It's the number four. And then what's the number that comes before four? Three. Now let's count these in order. Three, four, five, six, are you writing them? Seven, what's the number that goes right here? Seven, blank, nine. Three, four, five, six, seven, it's eight. There we go. And then nine. Great job. All right, go ahead and turn your page. Now I'm on the one that is trimmed in green and it says reteaching up at the top. Remember on this side will be an example and then on this is this, this is the side that we do the work. All right, let me grab a pen or a marker, a crayon, whatever. All right, for number one star, find it right here. We're gonna compare these two groups. Circle the group that is greater x the group that is less can you look at those right now and see which one is greater 
Yeah, it's the yellow group. I know that group is greater because it doesn't have any empty spaces. This 10 frame has empty spaces. This group is less in number than this group. Remember, grown-ups, if you're following along with us, um, they've kind of done it backwards here. Mrs. Barnard will always have you circle the group that's greater and X the group that's less, even if the directions say it different. Always circle the greater, X the less. All right, here we go for number two apple. We're going to compare these two groups and circle the one that's greater and we'll X the one that's less. Do you remember doing this? comparing groups by um, matching one to one. Let's do that with these apple, um, with these bananas and these oranges. Match one to one, one to one, one to one, one to one, and one to one. I can see that the group of oranges has extras. Let's count to see how many are in each group. One, two, three, four, five. Five bananas, let's write the number five. How many oranges? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's write the number seven. And we already know that seven is greater than five. Five is less than seven. Flip your page over. All right, we are going to count these little creatures right here. And we're going to compare these two groups. This is a pretty big group. We're going to mark them while we count so we make sure we get all of them. Let's do the little orange ones first. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's write the six, make a hoop and then a loop just that quick you made a six and now let's count these little is blue or purple kind of a dark dark bluish purple i don't know let's mark them one two three four let's write the number four all right comparing the number six to four which number is less it's four put an x on the four Circle the six. All right, let's look at number four, heart. I'm gonna read you this math story. April sees frogs at the pond. Then she sees one more. How many frogs does she see now? Let's see if we can find the number that is one greater than the number that is shown. First, let's count these frogs. One two, three, four, five, six. What's the number that is one greater than six? Well, let's draw another counter to represent another frog. Now, how many frogs are there? If you said seven, you got it. One more than six is seven. All right, kiddos. That is it for today. You can set those papers aside. That was just a quick practice as um, until we get ready for some all by yourself work, which Mrs. Barnard, if I haven't delivered it yet, it will be coming. Oh, it's not that one. I have it somewhere else. Anyway, um, so we'll do some more review tomorrow and that will be it for now. I'll see you later.